Joining me back on the podcast is one of our favorite guests here, John Gallagher of University of Hartford. Coach Gallagher, uh, welcome back to the podcast. Jared, great to be with you. Thanks for, for taking some time. I know it's a, a busy time for you. You got the semifinals tomorrow uh, against UMBC. So I want to start looking back on this season to this point so far. What has this season been like for you? I know there have been a, a lot of ups and downs. You, you've battled injuries. You've been through it all this year. What's it been like? One of the most fascinating and, and um, I would say one of the hardest but rewarding years of my coaching career um, because the first game of the year, you know, you have Dewan Clayton, uh, you have Hunter Marks, uh, you have Jared Kimbrough, and all two of those three um, are now not with us. Yeah. Kimbrough has come back, but he missed almost eight weeks. Um, so, and then you had Williams and, and Flowers, you know, Austin and, and Moses both had significant time away. And then you had Tracy come back at the mid-year. And, uh, you know, you, you really, um, from a coaching staff and coaching perspective, you had to have a lot of uh, conversations about moving peace, people around. Yeah. Look, in our last 10, we're seven and three. Uh, we've rested guys in that, in those three losses. So it's not like we're on a good run and we feel it and we're deep and we feel like we have a lot of, um, different things that we can do. Um, and there's a lot of irony in it, meaning to, as of today, this is the deepest we've been since the beginning of the year, since the first game. And it's the most versatile. Yeah. In, in terms of, from, you know, from a coaching perspective, what's it like trying to mix it and match pieces, having to change the game plan when guys are coming in and out of the lineup, like, like you've had to deal with this year? You know, it's a lot of in-game adjustments, a lot of um, master of like, try to, how do you win this matchup on this four minute segment? And, um, you know, it's a class on in-game adjustments Sometimes we weren't very good at it, but sometimes uh, as of late, we've sort of gotten it down and guys have gotten more comfortable in their roles. And I think the coaching staff has really uh, done a great job of, you know, getting Briggs McLean ready. Um, you know, obviously David Shriver's really taken a huge jump. Um, and, you know, I think Jared Kimbrough's taken a huge jump. So I think, you know, that's one thing I think we focus on all year is player development. Um, I think that's a staple of what we've done. And now it's five straight years in the semifinals. It's, and we're searching for that third consecutive championship game. Yeah, absolutely. I know a guy you mentioned earlier is Tracy Carter, who, who came and joined you guys at, at the mid-year point. What's it like having him back out on the court for you? And do you view him, you know, at this stage in his career as an extension of yourself out there on the court? Uh, you know, I could talk all day about them. Um, so why don't I No, yeah. but here's, here's the, here's the gist of it. He, you know, the other day in big spots, he's big and March is that time of year. And he is a big pl game player. Um, you know, I know coaches don't like to say that. And the reality is March, you know, I talked to somebody the other day. This isn't the NFL where Bill Parcells line of you are what your record is. That's not college yeah. basketball. That's not it. That's not why you have upsets because what you are in March is way different than what you were in November, December, January, and even February. And I think Tracy's concentration on his, you know, just getting better every day and every day bringing it in practice um, now he's in the best shape he's been in and he's finally, you know, you could feel his engine is revving at yeah. a high level. Another guy you, you mentioned that I've really enjoyed watching break out. I feel like the, this hot stretch that you've been on went winning seven out of 10 is David Shriver. I feel like every time he's putting the ball up from three, it, it's going in. What's it like having a guy like that on the team? I mean, I, I feel like he just spaces the floor really nicely and you, you've seen him drive to the basket too. I, I think he's doing a little bit of everything for you guys right now. He's really grown. He's really, really grown. And, uh, 
you know, I think if I, you know, if I had him a second year in the program, which he has another year, you just don't know what's going to happen. But yeah, I think he would, under our system, he would flourish even more. Like he would be a 20 point game scorer every night because he's not just a three point shooter. Yeah. He can, he's really, really versatile. And that's what I'm trying to get him to do is he can really put it down on the floor. He can post up. He can score on all three levels. He has a great floater game. He has a great pull-up game. He can finish above the rim. Um, you know, I, I'm going to talk to him like if he loses, if he, if he puts on, I would, I would say this, if he put, gets in amazing shape, uh, he can play a really long time. Yeah. And he's getting in better and better shape. But he is a gifted shooter. He's a great teammate. He's a competitive kid. Uh, and look, you know, we've challenged him and he's really responded. Uh, and look, we're, we're here because certain guys are really stepping up and it's a credit to, to the players and the assistant coaches really for really believing in what I've been saying all along is March will be there. Yeah. And I've been saying that and saying that and, uh, cause I believed it. I believed it. When you look at a couple other guys who have been injured throughout the season and have to deal with some things in Austin and Moses, what's it like having them both back out on the floor like you did the uh, the other day against Albany and the difference that that has on your team? It's fascinating uh, just how um, gritty, how tough, um, how much they're, they, they are the neighborhood. You know, we always say, you know, what's a neighborhood guy? What's a neighborhood player? What's a neighborhood teammate? <laughs> They'll do whatever it needs to be done. Uh, they sacrifice their bodies. They care about winning. Uh, I could talk, you know, Austin, in my mind, he's one of the three players of the year in the league. Uh, you know, he, he's carried us at times. You know, at 34 in that Vermont game. Uh, he's just, he epitomizes what an you know, what a Hartford basketball player is. Yeah. Uh, and then Moses has just grown so much. Um, you know, he's been in every practice. He's, you know, really given it and given it and given it. Uh, and he's grown. I mean, his, his, his play really, really uh, has just jumped. And uh, that's why I always say coach, every day because you don't know where you're going to be in March yeah. and that jump in March when people just stop playing because they're exhausted, you now are going to be pushing through. You now are going to be playing through it. And we've done that the last five years with this group, with all these groups. Um, you know, I was joking with somebody today, if we can win this game Wednesday night, it should be our fourth consecutive <laughs> championship game because four years ago, we got robbed of that one game, but I look, remember. look, this is a, this is a fun group. Uh, and Austin and Moses are guys that really uh, have given us so much. Looking back at, at the game in the quarterfinals the other day against Albany, what do you think were, were some of the keys to, to success in that game? And what do you like from your team? I mean, for me, just sticking out, I, I think you held Albany, I think it was to 13 points in the first half. I, I mean, take us through what, what you liked about your team in that game. You know, a coaching friend of mine in the middle of the year called me and said, uh, you know, you're not having the success because your defense isn't to the level of what it was. In our last 10 games, our defense has stepped up. And uh, I love our defense. And I think you have to begin and end with our, I would say, say our focus on the, on the scouting report. Mm -hmm. And this time of year, there's really good players on Albany. There's really good coaching on Albany. They're a good, they're a good program. Um, Dwayne has done a very nice job. You will have to understand that this time of year, if you let people beat you with the knowns, what we call the knowns, then your players are not as connected as you want to be. Mm -hmm. And we have to take away the knowns. If the knowns beat us, then we as a group, didn't either follow the game plan or they did something we weren't ready for. And usually this time of year, you're ready for it. And you just have to be, uh, you know, as concentrated on the plan as possible. And that's what we did in that first half. 
And if you really look at the first half, they had five fast break points and they had four points off a second chance. So in <laughs> the half court, they had four, four half court points. Yeah. Wow. So that is an elite half court defense. And we're going to need that tomorrow. Yeah. When you look at, at the matchup against UMBC, what can you take away from the first two games against them uh, heading into this one? Well, I give them credit. They're, they're responsible for the worst loss of the year. Uh, up seven with 346 left in the game. Uh, and I, I still, I watch it and it's, it's stunning. We did a lot of out of characteristic things. Uh, so look, I think, you know, and then up here, we were banged up. We were resting some guys and we had foul trouble. So, yeah. you know, it was a crazy game up 11, down 17, come back. It's a four point game. Um, the second one, uh, you know, I don't put as much stock in because it wasn't our full lineup. Mm -hmm. The first one was a hard one because that's the game Hunter Marks went down in. Um, you know, I look back at that game and, uh, you know, we held them the 22 first half points. The matchup is the guards. They have great guards. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, you know, I think Jimmy coach Ferry has done such a good job and uh, you know, they play with great flow. They play with great pace. They, they, you know, they're scoring, they're fun to watch. Uh, they developed the kid in the last month, the kid Wojcik. We talk about developing players in February well, their big kid, Wojcik, is really developed. So they're a fun program to watch. I just hope they're not fun tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I, 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 hope, I hope so for, for your sake, too. In terms of the team that you've got, you've got guys that were on this run you made last year. You, you've got some newer guys. How much do you think it helps to have those guys back from last year who have been through this gauntlet in terms of going through the America East tournament and, and getting that experience again in the NCAA tournament? Well, we talk from November, uh, we talk about being ready for March. Uh, we don't really, big wins in November do nothing for you. Yeah. Um, and no, December and in January, you know, John Cheney's old line is, they don't hand out NCAA watches in November and December. Now, and for our league, they only hand them out in March. Yeah. So we take, in this program, we take a whole developmental process to the whole year and if you look at our last five years I think we've peaked in the last February and March at the right time and because we everything is about February I mean uh, March February we put so much energy into February and getting better getting better yeah. individual development that the guys when it comes March we feel like it's our time whether that's right or not, I don't know, <laughs> but we feel that way. Yeah, for sure. Oh, well, well coach, I, I really appreciate you hopping on for a few minutes today b before the game. We wish you and the, the team the best luck. I know everyone's pulling for you guys up here. And if we went, by the way, the last time we did this was in a hotel room. I was in Indianapolis. Yes, yes. The JW and Marriott getting ready for Baylor in the first <laughs> round. So um, if we if we get this win, uh, We'll do something Friday for the, for the champions. Yes, agreed. We, we, we'll, we'll get that taken care of. Well, coach, uh, appreciate the time and best of luck tomorrow. Great to talk to you. Great to talk to you.